Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Consciousness Unleashed with Bonnie Siratori. I'm your co-host, Cynthia. Bonnie Siratori is a master energy tracker, master healer, spiritual accelerator, and the founder of, Exper of Spiritual Acceleration. You can find all her work at spiritualacceleration.com, including all the episodes of Consciousness Unleashed podcast. And today we're talking about, uh, we're continuing our talk on past lives and the soul's journey. This is part three. If you haven't seen part one and two, I'll leave the link in the description below. And I suggest you start at part one and move your way over here. But this also is a good standalone episode. You could just watch this one um, right now. So Bonnie, how's it going? <laughs> it's going. Yes. <laughs> You know, the, these series of uh, episodes have helped me a lot. I actually, since we've done these, the part one and two, I've done a lot of clearing on myself because you've, you've oh. really given me even more insight than I had before. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm just, I've done a lot more of that work you talk about because you've, what you've talked about in part one, especially part one, it's, it's so that episode I thought was really incredible. And I think it opened a lot of people's eyes to the work that they need to do. Mm -hmm. And in part one, you talked about how we carry over traumas uh, from past lives and we recreate those traumas in our current lives and future lives until we actually move through them completely and know them completely. And then we don't have to recreate them again. Mm -hmm. But I also know that uh, when you talk about the word carryover, you're, you're not just talking about traumas, you're talking about many, many other things we can carry over from past lives, things like um, entity attachments, maybe even vows, like maybe you made a vow to someone you will love them forever. And you, and that, that was truly forever. Now you can't find a, a partner. Right? <laughs> right. So there's so many things that we carry over. That's not, tra not trauma. So can you talk mm -hmm. about um, maybe, I know there's so many, you could just go on and on about it, but whatever uh, appears to you that you think should, should be talked about today in today's episode. Okay. Yes. So carryover, there's some really important carryovers. And what I mean by that is in a past life, the things that we do with others, okay, sometimes we might um, have done hurtful things, harmful things, maybe we've done atrocities, um, maybe we've caused like really painful experiences for people, uh, maybe we've caused harm to their families. So one of the carryovers that can happen is you can have people focused on you because of what you've done to them or their families. These people can become like an enemy or they can just become somebody that is just so focused on wanting revenge, retribution, that they attach to your energy frequency. And then when you're incarnating, they are actually following you, coming with you. Now, sometimes you have what I call victims. These are the peoples that you've perpetrated in some way. It could be simple little perpetrations like beating somebody up, or it could be like a major violation, like some kind of rape. Um, it can be a torturing thing or a mutilating thing. And to people, uh, it can be a sacrifice thing to people. So these people are victims and oftentimes <clears throat> victims will get anchored into your subconscious because when we victimize somebody, in a sense, we have power over them or we may want to have power over them or, you know, they, they become enslaved to us. So oftentimes I find lots of victims from past lives carry over in people that have victimized these people. Okay. So these are victims from, from, from past life, which is a carryover. And then um, when we have um, people that love us, you know what I mean? Like really, really love us and don't want to let go of us. And we, actually, we could do the same thing. And those people as well get attached to us and get carried over. And sometimes they interfere in our lives now because, you know, they're holding on to us. They're wanting something. They can block us from other connections, other friendships, other loves. Um, there's all kinds of reasons why people hold on 
to someone, okay? So the victim thing is really intense. We have victimized people, but then we have the, op the other side of that where people adore us, love us, cherish us. And then there's the other part too, where people obsess on us, all right? That gets a little dangerous. There's sometimes I find um, people that have gone psychotic, you know, when they're attacking somebody, uh, you know, like the, in a past life, the person, there was some really intense things happening and then, Everybody dies, but that one person is just focusing on the perpetrator or the violator or whoever they've got their, you know, their eyes on, and they can follow those people around for lifetimes and cause all kinds of havoc. And, and then also when we have love, you know, sometimes we make these oaths or promises with people like in past lives. I mean, even if you look at this lifetime right here, right now. How many times have you said to somebody or somebody's, I will love you forever? Okay. So those kinds of things too, when people make those kinds of vows, these are the vows and oaths and promises and allegiances and that we make. Um, when we make any kind of vow or take a uh, make agreements or contracts, they're like bound to, we are bound to these agreements and contracts and vows and oaths, promises, allegiances that we have made until we break them, okay? These are deeply, deeply embedded in the subconscious and the soul imprint, the, the places where we have made these agreements and contracts. And when we have uh, made, made an agreement with somebody, like let's just say in the past life, you know, Cynthia vowed to love someone for eternity, and now because of that, that's still anchored in the subconscious. So then what happens is she's never really going to find somebody else. The odds are not, are not real good. Are they possible? But mostly she'll be blocking it because on a subconscious level, at the soul level, she's made a promise. She took a vow, an oath. So she's not willing to be with anybody but that particular person, okay? Or that particular soul. So we make all kinds of promises and vows and we can sell ourselves out to the powers of darkness and we get involved with satanic rituals or, or um, we get black magic, voodoo, sorcery, wizardry, all these different darker energies. And we take vows, we make agreements and contracts. So those kinds of things, we are not set free from those very easily. These are big ones. And if we've been working in the powers of darkness and we've taken vows, <clears throat> we can change our mind. But the problem is we are never forgiven. We are never released until either we know how to do the release or we have somebody else release us from those contracts and vows. This is why so many lifetimes just keep repeatedly, you're being tortured and punished and, and su in suffering because of your commitment and vows that you've made with the powers of darkness, but you're not set free because just because you, you know, you did the Benedict Arnold and may change your mind and began and wanted to begin to serve the light again. So there are some things that are really intense and they will follow you and cause lots of harm and damage and destroy your life, destroy your world, destroy your health, destroy your finances. And these are the ones that the, the darker energies, the powers of darkness. So anytime we've taken vows, oaths, allegiances with the powers of darkness, that's a huge energy frequency. That's a huge thing to unravel. And we will suffer a lot <laughs> from those kinds of experiences. Bonnie, everything you talked about just now, I felt like you were reading me. <laughs> I was. <laughs> because <laughs> you, you were, yeah. I, I get <laughs> you guys, I can't make stuff up, okay? I have to read somebody in order to give information. So yeah. that's why I was reading you, of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, because <laughs> everything you're saying, I was like, wow, is I figured in the middle of it you were reading me. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so anyway, about, I have a question then about, because um, when I first became like, I guess, uh, spiritually awakened or started on this journey in this lifetime, it was about 10 to 11 years ago now. And that was when I started like seeing things, hearing things that, you know, I didn't before. And before that I was atheist. So I didn't believe in any of this stuff. And 
some of the first experiences I had with the spiritual realms was dark entities, like demonic entities getting attacked, like really severely, like just, um, I, I remember there were times where I didn't even want to go to sleep because they would attack me in that in between, like in between sleep and awake. Like really, oh, yeah, like I have a lot of stories about oh, what yeah. I experienced during that time. So mm -hmm. there were like nights that I just, I don't even know how many nights I just try to stay awake. Like I, you know, cause wow. I just, uh, it was really that bad. Mm -hmm. I found out later, you know, well, I don't want to get into all that, but it, you know, I found out later that, um, you know, I was being, well, when I learned your work, I, I knew that it, when you said that if I, people had past lives where they did really dark things, then there, you know, you're not let go just because you turn to the light. And so mm -hmm. even though I am a good person in this lifetime, like when you said that, I just knew that was true. Mm -hmm. Like I just mm -hmm. felt it in me like, oh, that's definitely the case. And that's one of the reasons why um, I was getting so attacked. Mm -hmm. So, it, and yeah, like right. pretty much every area of my life just can't move forward. Right. 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 Um, yep. So yeah. And you're the only one who has been able to actually help me with those, like even with your group clearings, Rosario has helped me, one of your accelerators, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tina, she helped mm -hmm. me with a family curse. So wow. the, your, your team that you've trained are incredible. Mm -hmm. And so I finally am making progress with certain things. Good. So my question now, Bonnie, is about uh, how, you know, I had curse, I had many curses on me, um, personal ones and then the family one as well. So I, I want you to maybe get into uh, how curses get carried over into future lives. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So if we're looking at curses, does she still have, yeah, you still have more. Okay. So if we're looking at curses, so you, you, I can see where you've had some cleaned up, but there's other ones. So the one I'm looking at <clears throat> is a curse. Whoa. Okay. So there's a curse on you that happened. Hang on. Wait, 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 back there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, this is a curse coming from someone who is like a shaman kind of, you know, someone that's got some powers. All right. So that kind of cursing, what happens is, is they cast that curse on a person. Okay, so the casting happened, your whole energy field took it. Now, I think it's important for people to understand and remember that there's still an agreement and contract. At a soul level, we are wanting to know ourselves in all ways. So one of the ways that Cynthia wanted to know herself was to be cursed, okay? So I'm, most everyone has some kind of experience in, the, in those realms. And when the energy gets cast, literally it's almost like this, um, the words have power, they have potency. Sometimes there's a conjuring, sometimes people are using different tools, uh, divinations, and different things that they're utilizing to really make these curses powerful, potent, and to last, okay? So um, a curse came onto you. It had the frequency of like, of like ash just being spread, covering your entire energy field. That anchored in, absorbed into you. <clears throat> then you began to live your life, you know, being born, coming into and reincarnating, passing and incarnating to this point in time, but they get anchored in on, because remember, we do agree to know ourselves. So that agreement allows them to anchor in. And then where we forget that we've uh, have these agreements and then we're in this place of suffering and we don't know why. So curses, it's like a, the word, you know, the word has been spoken. If I, send an energy to somebody or activate something inside of somebody, it works. It's real. It happens. Okay. So because of the belief, because of the agreements and contracts, because of all the soul dancing that we're doing, you are carrying that over into lifetimes on some level, knowing eventually <clears throat> this curse will be lifted. And as other curses have been lifted. Okay. So it's not like a destiny that you're going to be eternally not ha you know, having these curses on you. It's more that eventually somehow you're going to discover you got curses and you'll have them lifted. Okay. Kind of like what you've already been doing, but basically energy <clears throat> is energy. And when we, you know, cast these things and it anchors in, 
there's all these components that maintain it and keep it stuck in until we release it or it gets released by somebody else assisting us. Okay, so that's pretty much how curses, charms, sexes, voodoos, sorcery, witchcraft, wizardry, all of those things work. <clears throat> There's an intentional energy frequency. We're casting energy and it's being received, anchored in, accepted. And then we have those experiences of great suffering from those spells and castings curses so bonnie uh, what you're talking about it kind of is related to the concept of karma right that uh sort of no <laughs> like i did something in the past life and then i'm going to experience the other side of it is that no this is a little different curses are different now the karmic frequency karma is like for example when i'm looking at your you know, your live stream and some of the karmic frequencies. Okay, so you do have karmic abandonment things where you have abandoned, where you have ostracized, where you have cast out. So the karma of that means that we're going to experience the same thing that we ourselves were doing to others. Okay, so we're gathering that kind of karma throughout our lifetime. Now, we could say that a person is that casts curses on somebody, their karma is would be that, okay, they're going to get to know themselves in the same way. So that's what the karma is. The karma is almost like the balancing of good, bad, you know, all of it. And we, throughout every single lifetime, we are gathering and recreating karmic energy, you know? So if I'm hurting people, helping people, you know, like in, in what I, what I personally do in this lifetime, and I've done it many times, but in this lifetime, you know, the intention is to uh, bring light, bring consciousness. So that's like, you know, the karmic, karmic energy of that would also be where um, that has been happening in past lives, bringing it to other people, other people bringing it to me, but also whatever atrocities or hurtful things I've done or harm, even simple little things, like little, little things that we might not think anything about, you know, like being in our family and his siblings, you know, maybe my brother is running down the hall and I reach my foot out and trip him, you know, just out of just being like little ornery or mean or whatever, they are maybe even playful, but he falls down and gets hurt. Oh, great. Now I'm going to get to know the other side of that. That's, that's the karma. Okay. It's the back and forth. You hurt me. I hurt you. I poke you. You poke me. I stab you. You stab me. I murder you. You murder me. Okay. I torture you. You torture me. It may not be the exact same person that it was done to. It's just that we will know all faces of all of our deeds and actions. And that's, that's the karmic frequency. So then what's the answer to karma then? Is it just to release all of it and know it all? And then, and then once you experience all of it, then it stops? Stop, to stop the game. Okay, for example, let's just say in this lifetime that someone does something to you and it causes you harm. Okay, to stop the karma of that, you don't act out on it. You stop it. You end it. It's over. Dance done. Game over. I'm no longer doing it. I'm no longer playing. I'm not going to take any action. I'm not going to go after you. I'm not going to cause you harm. I'm not even going to think about you. We're done. We're done. Okay. So that would mean, let's just say in this lifetime that, um, you know, that you decided to, for whatever reasons, you know, you just wanted to um, like hurt me. Like stab me in the back. I'm, I'm, this is not true. I'm just saying, just give so people to understand. Okay, so you come to my house and we have a fight and you stab me in the back. I don't die, okay, but I have a lot of pain. So my, my initial reaction or thought might be, oh, I want to punish that person. I want to torture them. I want to get them back. I want to stab them in the back. Y'all can relate to this because this is what people do. Humans do this. You want revenge. You want retribution, okay? You want punishment. So what I'm saying is in that, if we're going to end this, so we don't have to do this dance over and over and over and over and over and over and over hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times, I'm done. I'm done. No retribution. I forgive you. We're done. Dance is over. I lay down my sword. We're done. 
and then there's no more because I'm not, I'm not coming back at you. You're not coming back at me. We're both done. So in order to do that, though, you need to do a lot of clearing work, right? Because that's because <laughs> <laughs> you can't for most people, they can't just say they're done. Right. Or maybe right. if at, in terms of their behavior, they're done with it. But in within it's got to be the emotion that it has yes, to exactly. be true and real. You can't just say, OK, I'm done. And you have all this energy inside of you because you're going to act that out. If you don't act it out in this lifetime, you will act it out. OK, it's a true letting go. And yes. Most people will need to do a lot of inner work, a lot of inner clearing and a lot of inner healing in order to be able to do that. Okay. Because like I said, people are emotional. They want revenge. You hurt me. I'm going to hurt you. You know, you, we watch it all the time. So yes, we can do that when we're no longer deeply and severely wounded and shattered and lots of trauma, shock in the body. So yes, we have to do our inner work to be able to truly be able to let go and be done with any kind of karma. So in today's episode, we mostly talked about all the negative things we carry over from past lives, mm-hmm. <laughs> but oh, we, yeah, also yeah. Can carry, yeah, we could also <laughs> carry over positive things to like abilities. Like for you, you've said you've, t- you've had many, many lifetimes as a healer mm-hmm. and here you are. Um, I, I think you're the best healer period in, in mm-hmm. this lifetime that I've come across for sure. And so it definitely shows like you have these abilities that you, you cultivated oh, yeah. over so many t- lifetimes. Oh yeah. And yeah. you hear about prodigies, like child prodigies, they could play like Beethoven when they're four years old mm-hmm. and things like mm-hmm. that. So you could talk about right. how we carry over those as well. Yes. Yes. So, and just, uh, just talking about my own self, I mean, I do have memory. I have flashes. Um, I've seen other past lives. But my life has truly been devoted for a very long time to the liberation, you know, my own liberation, liberation of others. And I've been many different kinds of teachers and leaders and healers and shaman and, you know what I mean, all these things. So that when I came into this, this lifetime, I literally had no training. I think this is important for people to understand. I'm talking no training at all. All right. Um, I remember when I had uh, a business partner and we were in Hawaii and she said, this, I, here's my training. I did have some training. This is it. So we have a woman coming over. She goes, Bonnie, this woman needs a soul retrieval. I'm like, what? She goes, don't worry about it. I'm like, okay, whatever. So the woman comes over. She goes, Bonnie, you need to go retrieve this woman. That's all she said to me. And like, Okay. <laughs> so I laid down with the woman because she told me to lay down and touching, you know, like that. And I just, boom, I was on my way. I did it. What I, in first, my first retrieval, I can see it as clear as day. Her father was in the underworld. He was holding a part of her and he, I had to, so I, I just into, I knew I needed to trade with him. This is my point. Okay. I knew. I didn't get the teaching here in this world or this lifetime, but I knew what to do. So I created and conjured up this incredibly red um, ruby. And he immediately wanted that ruby. He let go of her game over. I brought her back. Her life was changed. And that was my training. Okay. So my point is, yes, we have all these experiences. We have all these high level um, lifetimes and awarenesses and wakefulness and uh, abilities that we can literally bring in to our, into our future lifetimes. Like, for example, you were saying someone who, like a little child, all of a sudden they're playing, you know, amazing music on a piano, okay? So many, many, many people are bringing forth the gifts and the knowledge and the wisdom that they have discovered and learned and participated in throughout their life streams. So in my world, my reality, I actually bring forth teachings that you're not going to get anywhere else in the world. I'm bringing forth teachings, not just from the time of Jesus and the true teachings of Jesus, but also even further back, you know, eight, 10,000 years ago, Egypt, Egypt, when we were in the temples and the high priestesses, I have full memory of being a high priestess. I have full memory of going, uh, being an initiate and going into the sarcophagus. Okay. So many things happened for me, all these teachings and all the things I saw, I saw the, the, how 
creation, how life was created before anything was existed, anything. I saw pure blackness and I saw, so I've seen and been shown many, many things, um, but not, a, not here on planet earth by you know, other humans. You know, it's been all on these high level teachings. So we have all these experiences that we actually bring forth. There's a lot of people who just innately know how to do things. You know, it's like natural for them. So we, we do carry forth these, this wisdom and knowledge. It's in us, you know what I mean? It's, it's our souls, our souls as they evolve and wake up. And we bring that with us into these incarnations. It's pretty, it's, it's amazing. It's pretty awesome. That's really cool that you shared about uh, your past lives as a healer. And specifically, I think I've heard you talk a little bit before about um, ancient Egypt. And, yeah. and other like group clearings that you had uh, that are in the shop, there, there were a few where you actually do talk about your past life there. And I think we can maybe do like a special episode at some point where you could go into uh, some of these past lives where you have mm -hmm. a lot of memory of and you could talk about mm -hmm. like your experience because you did go to Egypt in this lifetime, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've been there a couple of times and um, I brought a group and um, Yes, I've had I have had some very huge experiences in Egypt. In fact, the um, the temple of Isis. I'm just going to quickly just share this. We can do, do with it whatever. But when I was in the in that temple, um, this was the when I when there was a group of people and we were at the temple and there was a guide and we were sitting. So the people with the guide, I started walking over and all of a sudden my body started going into nausea collapsing i'm going what's going on here and so finally we got over to where the guide was and he was saying that a quarter of a mile away was where the actual temple was but when they flooded the nile they had to move the whole temple you know brick by brick and they did it so it's supposed to be perfect what i was shown is the alignment was still with the temple quarter mile away and i was being asked to move that that energy frequency to the new temple my mind's going this isn't even possible. How this is not even what? So I just said, okay, whatever. I'm just going to work it. So I had guided the whole group and we literally moved. It, I mean, a quarter mile on the earth when you're looking down is nothing. Okay. So literally, I, we shifted the energy or I shifted the energy with the group's support and the frequency now aligned and the whole energy frequency of the temple shifted and changed. All of a sudden, there was light happening. People were like almost giddy. Um, you know, it's a temple. So there's lots of people that come there. Our, our whole group of people, there were 16 of us. Everyone was shifted and changed and memories were coming through because a lot of these people were at the temple and we were all remembering our past lives together and remembering who each of us were and everything just opened up. So that was a huge experience. And, but that was something, one of the, one of the things that happened in Egypt. Yeah. But I had many, many, many. Cool. Maybe we could do an episode on that. And that could be for people who sign up for a newsletter, like a special right. like thing. I have a memory. I died in a sarcophagus in ancient Egypt. Mm -hmm. Just letting you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. That means you were in, that means you were an initiate. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe it was at the Scarnet in, in memory. <laughs> We can talk about that in the next episode. Yeah, the yeah. Well, we, we, well, we lives. went. It, that's true. That's true. <laughs> that's true. That's a big one. People often think I'm having a past life, and it's not. It's a discarnate remembering their past life. Yeah. So the sarcophagus, you're in there for 72 hours. That's you know they put that lid on, and you're in there 72 hours. The intention okay. is to make it through. So yeah. All right. Well, Bonnie, I think that concludes this particular part of the series for past lives. This was a really fun one. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you everybody for tuning in once again please if you're watching this on youtube like the video subscribe if you're new comment below uh, what you think about this video also if you're on apple please leave a review for consciousness unleashed uh, part four is coming up hopefully in a few weeks from now and remember there's going to be an exercise bonnie will do to lead us into the state of pure awareness that's within us so that's going to be something to look forward to and is there anything else, Bonnie, before we end up or end this? Mm, just know that, you know, everybody has had many, many experiences. And a lot of these experiences you forget, but a lot of these things that you know, you do know, and you carry them forth. 
And you might be going, wow, how come I'm such a great baker? Or how come I'm such a great artist? Wow, I didn't have any training. It's because of who you were. All right, cool. Thank you so much, Bonnie. And thank you everybody for tuning in. I'll see you next time.